assume everybody knows where cheese comes from, but how many of you know how cheese is made? Well, I brought you to the right place, and our episode today is just about that. And to learn the science of cheese making, I'm bringing you to an expert. I want you to meet Shanna. Hello, and welcome to the cheese shop today. Thank you for having us. If we were to talk to kids in America today, they would be able to name about two or three different kinds of cheeses, like mozzarella, American cheese, maybe cheddar. Yes, that's about it. Yeah, but there are so many different kinds of cheeses. There are. And you are an expert. Thank you. Okay, and so I would appreciate it if you can take us through the different groups of cheeses and tell us all about it. Sure, we're gonna start with the seven styles of cheese that the world uses to describe and it's based on texture and rind. The first cheese is a fresh cheese, which is soft and creamy. The second cheese is um, a fresh aged cheese, which is a little bit firmer. If I, if, if I can out, sure. no. stop you and ask you, you said a fresh cheese, what does it mean, fresh cheese? That you can make it that day and consume it that day, and you could eat it that day. So does this cheese have to be made out of particular milk? Like, does it have to be pasteurized, or can it, can it be raw? Or In America, it has to be pasteurized if it's going to be a fresh cheese. Okay, so just and, for the safety reasons. Um, yes, the, okay. yes, 60 days for raw milk. We do make raw milk cheeses in America, but they're required to be 60 days old. I see. Okay, so the next one, how old is this one, let's say? This is um, three to six months old, so it's a fresh aged cheese. So it's still going to be soft, and it's still going to have a lot of creaminess to it, but a little bit, a little bit firmer. And so, what is this particular cheese? Can you give us its name? It's Saint Andre, and it's pasteurized triple cream from France. Oh, sounds really good. Mm -hmm. And so, what do we have here? So the third variety is a soft ripened cheese, which typically means that the cheese ripens from the outside towards the center, and they tend to be really soft, really soft. Is this something like a, a brie? Like, is it the same texture or is it the same? It's creamier than creamier. brie. Mm -hmm. Brie is more closer to the fresh aged cheese. Okay, and so what is, what is the next one? Oh, this is the fourth style of cheese, which is Ooh. very odiferous, yes. Ooh. They typically have a, a nice barnyard aroma and they're washed rind style which means that they have taken the care to wash the outside of the cheese with wine, sometimes liquors, ciders, different things like that to create the outside rind, which will eventually uh, create flavors into the paste of the cheese. This is a hard cheese, which is our fifth style of cheese in the world, and it's typically aged a long time, mm. usually over a year for aged cheeses and they can be aged up to 20 years, which is a lot of care and a lot of rent. 20 years, yep. okay, we're talking about aging cheese, so can you tell me um, uh, what are the, some of the oldest cheeses in the world today? Um, par typically Parmigiano Reggiano, uh, Cheddars, and Haudas, or Gouda as we say in America. Okay, so they can be aged up to five years or more or longer, yes. There are what's the longest? So that's the I think currently is probably twenty years. Twenty years. Yes. Do you Although hear this a, kids? I know. <laughs> twenty years? Oh my goodness. Well, I also want to point to the difference in a fragrance between this cheese and this cheese. Mm -hmm. See, my, my taste buds were trained to say yes to this mm -hmm. okay and not <laughs> yes. so much to this mm -hmm. and so the, what that's what we're doing today in this show is to try to um, bring different cheeses to you guys so you will try them and hopefully develop a taste for these wonderful cheeses and mm -hmm. kind of go beyond cheddar and mozzarella Jana, how long have you been making cheese i've been making cheese for about 10 years now 10 years yes and professionally i did it for three years but now I just do it for fun and demonstrations at the store. Blue cheese. Oh, so it's a blue cheese and it's smoked. Okay, mm -hmm. we gotta smell that too. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. I do smell it. Oh, it's wonderful. Mm, it a wonderful is. combination it, to cheese and, and smoky flavors. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love it. Wonderful. Okay, last one. Tell us about the last one. So the last category or style would be flavored, flavored cheeses. And this is 
a naturally flavored cheese from England. Mm -hmm. It's a white Stilton, which is a cow's milk cheese, very traditional English cheese, Ooh. infused with lemon zest. Oh, mm -hmm. interesting. Yes. So it's more like a dessert cheese or breakfast cheese or a cheese for salads. So did you hear that? <laughs> Imagine a slice of this on a warm toast in the mo morning with a little bit of marmalade mm -hmm. on the top. I think you guys would love this. I never tried cheese like this and um, I brought a couple of girls with me because I want them to try some of these cheeses and give the comments to other kids and hopefully encourage you guys to try it too. Mm -hmm. uh, so some of these cheeses I never tried. I'm as, just as guilty. And so um, the whole point of us being here today is that we learn something and we try something new and we hope that you guys will do the same. Yes. Here's a, a question that I think a lot of a lot of people would like to have answered. What turns milk into cheese? What happens to milk to become this? Milk is exposed to bacteria and hopefully it's... Are we talking about good bacteria? Of course. Okay, good, good bacteria. bacteria. Yes. And healthy bacteria that uh, hopefully is of origin of where the cheese, be cheese is being made, but different cheese styles can require certain bacteria from the region that cheese originated in. Now, let's make something clear with our viewers. It's not a bacteria that just uh, spoils the milk. It's the bacteria actually that, that works within the proteins of milk. Is that so? Or how does it, what happens? Why is this bacteria different than a bad bacteria? And how do we know we have a good bacteria in the milk to turn it into a cheese? Well, it's what they call culture, which is culture. sort of like when you make gonna... sourdough, you have a mother culture, so it's something that is is locally usually in the air that creates the healthy bacteria in the cheese. Oh, that's a very good point. I never thought about this. And although I grew up uh, on a farm milking cows and making cheeses with my grandmother and my uh, mom, I never knew that a culture that's even in the air and bacteria around our area was making this particular cheese. So is this why certain regions have better cheeses than others? It definitely is an influence. So the natural bacteria within the region influences the flavors profile in the cheese. That is very interesting to learn because now we have not just the bacteria of the region, but also we have the uh, grass of the region, air, water, and yes. everything else that comes into the creation of a unique cheese. Yes, you bring up a, a very good point because to have wonderful cheese, you must have wonderful milk. Ah, to have a wonderful what, milk. Yes. Yeah. The, the animals have to have a wonderful diet huh. and be happy animals. So all of you who are thinking about cheese making, think about healthy, happy cows first or ha healthy, happy goats yes. first. Mm -hmm. And then that's exactly. one way to get a good cheese. Exactly. I would like to see more kids eat good cheese. So can you tell me of some of the benefits of having a good cheese in your diet? In my opinion, raw milk is a living ingredient to cheese. Ah, did you? Oh, I, 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 it's a little moment, a living thing, which means nice if you put the living thing in your Very belly, yes, it's going to do good things, right? Yes. Living things. Okay, so yes, tell us about good. it. It's good for your digestion. It's good for your overall health. And um, so pasteurized milk is considered dead milk in the rest of the world. It, so it, it has wonderful proteins and, of course, calcium, and that's just a few uh, ingredients in, to the health benefits. It's very satisfying, so you don't have to eat a lot of it because it's so rich and beautiful. So it, a little bit goes a long way with really good cheese. So kids don't have to snack on other, all the junk. If you have a nice piece of cheese, it's oh, going to keep you happy. Exactly. Okay. Very satisfying for the little bellies. And um, let's see, the, you know, the, the culture, the European culture, especially the French, they eat cheese all the time and they enjoy a very healthy, long life. And it, cheeses like this, they don't incorporate a yellow five or red seven or whatever the colors they have. Oh no, no. Okay. We, we, we don't want to see any yeah. unnatural flavors, any unnatural colors, well, no um, emulsifiers, no cheese like food. Right. We, yeah. right. And We're then, looking at the real deal. Real deal. <laughs> and um, 
with exception to some of you who can have dairy at all. And I'm one of those people who struggles a bit with dairy. So I do choose cheeses that are um, handmade mm -hmm. and uh, cheeses that are still alive, as you, as you just said. So uh, with exception to some of you who can have this, rest of you kids, I would highly encourage you to try mm -hmm. having a good cheese in your snack. So rumor has it that a cheese makes people happy. Is that true? Well, there is science saying that cheese triggers serotonin to be released in the brain, which happens to make people happier. Huh. So if you eat good cheese, you will not only be satisfied in your tummy, but also in your head as well. Yes, exactly. Huh. So once you satisfy both, uh, do you think people might eat a little less? Oh yes, definitely. So if you eat quality food, usually you will eat less mm -hmm. and feel mm -hmm. better. That's true. I That's like that true. combination. Mm -hmm. Introducing children to new variety and cheese tastes should start early with mild and then grow their palate slowly with stronger, more flavorful cheeses. So we have a, a crucial time uh, to introduce new flavors to kids. Mm -hmm. So it's very good to do it while they're little, right? Yes, but you need to start um, with the milder cheeses because the child is going to have either a positive, a negative, or a neutral reaction to the cheese. If you give them something too strong at first, they might have a bad, they may, they may not like it, and then they'll be turned off for the rest of their life. So it's better to grow their palate with mild to strong cheeses over time. How wonderful it would be that every town in America has its own cheese maker, so the kids could learn all the wonderful flavors and tastes. I have a lot of hopes for all of you, my young viewers. I think that they're gonna do a lot better than our generation. I think kids will actually take over all this wonderful uh, food growing and food making and they're gonna do it so much better so that's why we are here to kind of help you along the way and tell you look what's out there and hopefully get your interest and see you carry on with this tradition oh, no. mm -hmm. I learned so much and I think it's time that we start tasting some of these cheeses so oh, sure I like to bring the girls in yes. And who yes it was time to bring the real critic in Really? Mmm. I think it's awesome. But tell me why you don't like it. What about it you don't like? The dryness. Dryness. Mmm. Oh, texture for thing. texture. Mm -hmm. How, what do you think about it? It's oh. <laughs> I taste Parmesan. It's like almost like a Parmesan. Mm -hmm. Almost. But it's I, I, from a different oh, I region. Like, mm. I like the end. Ooh. Oh, so the finish is nice. We're talking like a big girls now. Uh huh. She yes. likes the ending taste. It's a little bit dry, but she likes yeah. the ending note. Okay, two more cheeses to try. And this one is, you all know, it's a blue cheese, right? Okay. You know, guys, uh, I was not lucky as you are. I didn't get to try blue cheese until I was in, in my 40s. And I didn't like it at first. It's like, ew, who in the world would eat such a thing? But today, it's one of my favorites. <laughs> I've noticed that with a lot of people, that it's an acquired taste. Mm. This yeah. one's smoky. What do you think? What it's I salty. don't think. Yeah, what I don't like is the saltiness. Mmm. Okay. Mm. So what do you think this cheese would be good at? Or on? Maybe? Crackers. Burger? Crackers? I with the pear. Mm. Does that help because you get the sweet and the salty? Uh -huh. Yeah. It, because it's from, Eng it's made in England. It's a cow's milk cheese. It's a very traditional English cheese called uh, Stilton. It just tastes like a cookie. Uh -huh, I agree. I just, it tastes like, I don't know what it reminds me of, but it's like a cookie in my mouth. Doesn't even, mm. you don't even have a, you don't even think I it's don't a taste cheese. cheese. Mm -mm. I taste the cookie, the lemon cookie. I like the lemon. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Mm. That's awesome. So can you imagine having a piece of cheese and your brain is registering that you're having a cookie? I think that's <laughs> the ultimate food. Okay, we had a wonderful day today. Uh, this was a privilege to learn so much and then to taste so much. This was really, really fun. And now, after a day of filming, all that was left to do is to enjoy the company and these wonderful cheeses. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you soon in our next episode.